All right, guys, it's uh, Friday, January 5th, the 6th, rather. Um, we're in the Lost Nation State game area in extreme southern Michigan, Hillsdale County. Uh, Ohio is about two miles behind you, and the rest of Michigan is right behind me. Uh, it's about 49 degrees out right now. That's what my thermometer says. It's going to warm up probably a couple more degrees. Kind of a warm day, actually a really warm day for this time of year. Um, this time last year we were ice fishing on 10 inches of ice. Uh, hopefully we'll get some ice here sooner or later. Uh, but for today, we're going to take advantage of the warm weather and uh, get out and do a little overnight camp here in the Lost Nations. Going to uh, try a few different things out. I've got a couple of theories I want to try out, and uh, I'll go over those in later videos. These are all going to be kind of short clips because I don't have uh, editing software. And uh, go over what my theories are and let you know whether they work or not. Maybe it's some information that, uh, that some of you guys can use, and, and I can use in the future for whatever uh, info I gain from kind of testing these little theories out. I've got two of them. Um, it's a little bit wet out here. We, we got a couple inches of snow a couple of days ago and with the warmer temperatures, there's my son Andrew, he's out with us today. He and I are gonna kind of join together on this trip. Andrew, I don't know if you can see there, uh, the drive into the, uh, the park here is pretty wet. You can see there's still a little bit of snow there but most of it has uh, melted off and that's gonna make things wet. But uh, above ground, everything seems to be pretty dry, so I think we can deal with uh, what we need to deal. We'll get our bed up off the ground a little bit, uh, keep from soaking up the, uh, the water overnight. Other than that, we're going to uh, camp about a mile or so that way to the south. Um, there's a, a lake down there. I'll show you some of that, and then a, ri a ridge, and then the St. Joseph River which is one of the few places out in this part of the state where you can actually catch brown trout. They stock those in there every year, and uh, kind of tough to get to where we're going. But uh, it, it pays off whenever we get a chance to get out there and do a little fishing. We also mushroom hunt these woods out here, too. And uh, we're going to try turkey hunting out here this year. So uh, stick with us, and uh, we'll have a few short clips on uh, as we go through the day. I'll probably be posting these on Monday the uh, 9th. Okay, guys, I told you I'd be talking about... Uh, one of my theories, and uh, it's not brand new. I'm sure I'm not the first person that thought of it, but uh, we talk about things that are multi-purpose. Uh, that's a little bit bigger container than I like to carry right there, but I do like to carry a little bit of hand sanitizer with me uh, when I'm out in the woods. This one I picked up today because I was out and they didn't have a smaller container. But uh, when you talk about multiple purpose, you've got, uh, obviously, you can wash your hands with it if you're in an area that doesn't have water or if you're without soap, <laughs> excuse me, it's also a good antiseptic. If, uh, you know, it says right here it kills 99.99% .99 of germs. So if you've got a cut and you need some antiseptic, it's going to burn like hell, but uh, it'll, it'll kill the bugs, kill the germs. A third purpose for it, obviously, it's uh, a large part alcohol, and it, it burns really well. And one of the things that I use it for is uh, if I can get this darn thing open. One of the things I like to use it for is to start fires. Well, we're going to do it the old-fashioned way. Pour a little bit of that gel out here. Got some dry leaves here for tinder to start with. Everything out here today is really damp, so we're this probably won't be our last attempt at a fire. But uh, I just, for the demonstration purposes here, wanted to kind of see how she works. And I've got a little bit of a cold, so I hope you'll excuse that. Use my old standby. Now I know a lot of, a lot of the guys like to use a, a ferro rod. I don't mind the ferro rod, but I keep a uh, I keep this old girl in a uh, watertight container, so I don't usually worry about the uh, about her getting wet. I carry a couple backup sources of ignition too. Once you get that uh, that gel burning, it does pretty good. Let's a little bit more on there. I have no idea how to work this thing. Like I say, I normally use just a, a much smaller container. You gonna help me with that, Andrew? And I'm using an awful lot of it here because, like I said, this stuff is. Uh, you have to make a little bit better effort with my tinder and my kindling here. A 
tinder's burning fast and my kindling didn't catch any. Got some of this here, this powder wood that's you wanna put that back on there for me. Grab me some of that bark there, will you, Andrew? You may be able to get this going yet. Bark there, Andrew. Yes. Break that into strips. And it looks like we've got ignition. That's one of the things I wanted to try out now yeah, on camera. I've used uh, used the uh, hand sanitizer plenty of times before. Uh, usually not in a situation like this, though. I've always got uh, something up my sleeve. I keep the Zippo. I also keep a little bit of lighter fluid in a really wet situation. I don't like to use it. It's kind of expensive, but in a situation where it's really wet, we can, uh, we can always throw a little Zippo fuel on there and go to town. smother that out and then I said I had another theory that I wanted to try out and unfortunately it's wet up here um, but it's not cold so I haven't been able to put this to it to a really good test and I probably won't now this is our first night of course we're only here for one night but uh, it's gonna get colder tonight but uh, I don't know if you can see that package there that's a, a package from diabetic and circulatory socks the reason I bring that up is because, you know, we're going. A lot of us are going to. Uh, we talk about fabrics and and things for for keeping uh, keeping warm and dry. Well, cotton socks suck. Uh, I wear them around home. I wear them to work, and I can tell you, at the end of the day, if I had to be outside for any length of time, my feet would freeze. I wear the boots that I have on right now. These are just regular old uh, hiker boots, fifty dollar hiker boots, uninsulated. Uh, Andrew's wearing pack boots, but. Uh, I loaned him mine because his other boots are Mickey Mouse boots and it would have been a little bit overkill for him to wear those up here today. So uh, my theory is that because these are 95% I believe somewhere, 95% polyester, we've got nylon and rubber, 94% polyester, 4% rubber, 2% spandex, they're designed to keep your feet drier, they're designed to, to help circulation which, you know, if you're a diabetic patient, that can mean uh, the difference between, you know, keeping your leg or losing your leg. And, but uh, for those of us in the cold weather situations, it could mean the same thing. It stands to reason that uh, if these work for a person with diabetes who needs help with their circulation, it stands to reason that it would be a, a good idea to have as, an under, as a pair of under socks. I don't, wouldn't suggest just throwing on a pair of diabetic socks and your pack boots and going out in the, the extreme cold throw on some wool over top but these are great for wicking the uh, moisture away from your skin a lot cheaper than, than the uh, than the Under Armour socks or the Poly Pro socks that you can buy at Gander Mountain or, or Cabela's so uh, it's something worth looking into I paid four dollars for the two pair that Andrew and I are wearing at a dollar store this morning so something to think about well looks like we got ignition we're gonna go ahead and get our fire going we've got a long fire here our bed didn't quite turn out the way that I wanted it to tonight. It's been a while since uh, since I camped this way, since I was a teenager. Um, usually I bring a tarp out with me and just throw that down in a, a mattress pad, a sleep pad. But today we decided to try something different. It's been cool. It's kind of a fun thing to learn, a uh, fun thing to practice. But uh, it hasn't turned out quite like we wanted to, but we're going to make it work. Let's show you a little bit of what we got. Don't laugh too hard, but here we go. 
uh, the, the bed has a lot more work to be done before we can sleep in that tonight. Uh, our debris shelter here, we decided to go with, uh, I keep that tarp in my pack or that, that poncho in my pack. Uh, we just pulled that over and threw some leaves up on the bottom there. That's going to keep us covered overnight. It's not supposed to rain tonight, but uh, you never can tell. We're in Michigan. And we'll, uh, we'll keep you posted. Fire's really starting to take off there. We'll keep you posted. And thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll have another video up. Well, as you can see, we've got a, uh, a decent fire going here um, and a decent pile of firewood, which you probably can't see. It's going to be a little while before we go to bed, so we haven't made up the bed yet, but uh, we'll do that in a little while. I don't want to invite dampness into the uh, into the sleeping bag, so we'll uh, we'll do that in a little bit. But this is the fire that I started uh, er with the earlier video. I didn't have to come back and do anything to it. Uh, the leaves that I used were, were dry. They weren't on the ground. They were on a couple of branches on a tree over here that was uh, over to the, uh, was that the north of us, that was... Uh, that the leaves are all dead. It was broken branch, and apparently they didn't fall off in the uh, in the autumn. So they were right up there, way off the ground, and in the air, and plenty dry. So we used those for uh, for our tinder there to get this thing started, and then some what dry sticks we could find from uh, standing dead timber. This is what we got. Uh, I don't know if you can see inside here or not, and probably can't with that little light on the camera. But uh, there's the bed, and it is not even close to ready to be sleep, slept on. We're going to throw the uh, wool blankets down and put the sleeping bags on top of those. So far so good. It's still, believe it or not, at about 7.30 on January 6th. It is uh, still about 45, 46 degrees out here. Um, supposed to uh, cloud up tonight and I thought that would keep it uh, keep it a little bit warmer but if you can see right up there that is the moon and uh, it's pretty clear there aren't a lot of clouds out tonight so I got a feeling it's gonna get cold before morning but uh, I think we've got it handled pretty well and uh, we'll be back in the morning Okay, it's about uh, 5.30 in the morning. Um, dropped down to around 30 overnight. I think it's probably going to get a little bit colder before the sun comes up in a couple of hours. But uh, I wanted to show you a little something here. We uh, found a big, tall uh, tree, dead tree, probably about 20 feet tall. Um, just the stump, I guess. Uh, the trunk of, of what I like to call powder wood. I guess it's... Uh, probably can't see that my batteries are going in my in my lamp here I I bought a new set but I bought double A's and it turns out these are triple A's I knew that I don't know uh, what exactly I was thinking but uh, if you, you can see that uh, stump over there maybe I'll have to show it to you in the daylight we had that piece by the time it was all done we knocked this thing down it was about 20 feet tall what about twice that size and then the, the bottom four foot of it was uh, was really wet and heavy so we couldn't uh, we couldn't move it, and at first I tried picking it up from the bottom, and I thought, well, it's a lost cause. We're not, we're not going to be able to move that piece of wood. Um, picked it up from the other end, and it snapped off from the wet part of the bottom. And uh, Andrew dragged that one over, and we dragged uh, this other piece that was about twice the size. I put that on the fire before we went to bed last night, and uh, it uh, really it burned through the night. I slept. Uh, I went to bed about. 10:30 last night. I woke up at 12:30. Nature's call. Um, it was still glowing pretty red, so I put a couple of dead sticks in there and a couple of green sticks. Um, and then I rolled that log in just a little bit farther. It really caught up, and we stayed warm all night. In fact, I'm sitting here right now. It's 30 degrees. All I'm wearing is uh, I've got a thermal shirt on, the, po the polyester thermals, and then a, a, a fleece shirt over top of that, and with the heat off of that fire, I'm, I'm actually pretty toasty right here. There's a little bit of wind uh, out of the southwest there. Um, we situated our camp here so that uh, the wind would blow parallel to the fire, blow across it. Um, and, <clears throat> wow, no smoke in the, in the, in the lean-to all night. We stayed warm. 
Um, I use this bag that's good down to 30 degrees, which is about what it is right now, and I was I was sweating. So, you know, it's uh, that says something about the bag and about the fact that uh, we've had this hot bed of coals all night, and it's just like a radiant heater. It's kept us warm and uh, done pretty good. That was a lucky find. Uh, I think even without that, we would have had enough firewood to get through the night, but it would have been a matter of getting up and stoking this thing up every every hour or so, and uh, or maybe a little bit more than that. But with with all the dead wood, we we collect a lot of dead stuff, but this powder wood is it's only powder on the outside. It's uh, it's wet on the inside a little bit, just damp enough that uh, it, it burns just a little bit slower. Uh, that piece that I've got in there burned through in the middle of the night, and I got up just before I turned the camera on, scooted that in. I uh, haven't really stoked it up real good because I'm going to go back to bed here in just a couple of minutes, and I might throw some more green in there because the, that, those coals are hot enough that they're burning right through the green wood. This piece on the outside, this longer, narrower piece, was just soaked. It was on the ground uh, over there. And I dragged it in here because my side piece was burned through in the middle of the night and kind of did away with my uh, the outside of my fire pit there. So I brought that in to replace it. And that's burned somewhat. That'll probably burn through. Um, we'll probably get that burned up this morning while we're making uh, making breakfast before we before we hit the woods and, and uh, go out and do a little squirrel hunting. But uh, just a little something I wanted to show you. Uh, lucky find for us and uh, it kind of helped us make, get through the night. Alright, I'm going to take a couple of minutes here while I'm waiting for Andrew to wake up and uh, review a couple of things. Um, I got this the uh, K Bar uh, Johnson Adventure Blades Bacon Maker, and I got this for Christmas, and a couple of guys had asked what I thought of it, and at that time I, I didn't really. Uh, you know, my first impression was that it was a, a pretty pretty neat instrument, but uh, hadn't had a chance to use it. Um, now that I have, uh, not extensively, obviously, because this is a one-night track, but uh, I'm pretty impressed with it. Uh, I didn't break my hatchet out at all last night. This thing is a tank. Look at that. Uh, that's that's about three-sixteenths of an inch thick right there. And it's probably a little closer to five thirty seconds, but... Uh, my tape measure isn't uh, probably in the most accurate. Right around three sixteenths of an inch thick along the spine, full tang, all the way, uh, American made. And if you look at the shape of that handle, that just fits nicely in the hand in, in several positions. Um, yeah, like that, you know, for for chopping. I know I used it quite a bit uh, to to limb some branches last night that, as we were making our shelter and. And uh, some of the stuff that I threw into the fire, I just kind of took the little, the small limbs off of it just to make it easier to lay in the fire there. And I did a lot of that with it. Um, it works perfect for that. This thing, I didn't get my hatchet out at all yesterday um, and probably won't take it on the next trip. This thing swings really nice, uh, chops really nice. It still has a really good edge on it. I used it quite a bit last night. Um, you know, there's there's several positions. I mean, if you're if you're skinning, you know the blade's a bit long. If I had my druthers, it'd be uh, it'd be about an inch inch and a half shorter than that. But uh, I really can't complain about it. Uh, it's, it fits nice in the hand. It's uh, it's big. I'm gonna have to invest in a new belt or maybe some suspenders because I carry quite a bit of stuff on my belt. I carry my knife, uh, multi-tool, my pistol. So uh, it's 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 heavy, but it's heavy duty too, and it's got. Another feature that I like, um, I talked about skinning. If you're working with small game, this is is a kind of a neat addition. This is what sold me on the knife um, when I first saw it. I, my, my wife got it for me at the uh, local surplus store. And uh, other than the fact that, that the knife itself is a tank, um, it comes with this little tool right here. Um, for skinning or any small jobs that you want to do, that's called a piggyback knife. That's stainless steel, and I think that's made in China. You can see, maybe right there. Um, the the other knife, the the bacon maker, obviously made here in the U.S., but this made in China. Uh, still, 
pretty neat little addition to the kit. Um, I tied a little paracord on it here, so when I use it, uh, I used it last night for all of our, when we built our shelter to cut the paracord, um, and then just kind of let it dangle there. And uh, you know, it's got to be careful not to, you know, remember that it, I have to remember that it's there. But uh, pretty neat little addition to that. It makes it uh, makes it a little more uh, versatile. The whole kit, and then uh, the sheath is a monster. Um, you can see right there where the uh, where the bacon maker goes, and then there's the little. I'll show you the little uh, snap-in pouch where the piggyback goes. That goes right under there, and then got this pouch right here, which may be a little cumbersome. I guess if you wanted to stick a ferrule rod in there, I've got some paracord in there, but I think I just threw that in there because it was extra on hand, and I just tossed it down in there yesterday. I keep this handy. Um, it's like four dollars at Walmart and it's not uh, it's not a sharpening stone obviously there there are better ways to sharpen a knife but if you want to get it sharp quick you're sitting around the fire at night or uh, you know you just want to put a little edge on it or or if you just need to sharpen it up quick while you're if you're skinning some skinning a deer or whatever this thing actually works quite well. I was kind of impressed with it even though it costs four dollars and I've done a lot of sharp sharpening with it. I sharpened my fillet knife with it, and uh, we filleted a lot of fish uh, this past year. So, you know, it's uh, for the price you can't you really can't beat it. And the uh, the knife itself, beyond the paracord that I got stuck in here, comes with this, which I assume maybe they meant for you to lash it down to your leg. But this thing's, you know, it's a foot long. There's no need to lash it down. It's not going anywhere. But uh, that comes with it. I don't know what I'll use that for. I'm sure I'll find a use for it. Just stuff everything back in there, kind of willy-nilly. But I'm kind of—I'm pretty impressed with the with the K-bar. Ah, glad I got it. Um, my wife's pretty good at picking out Christmas gifts. She did a did a good job on this one. I'm gonna pack all this away. Let's take a look at another item here. Now, I, I plan to invest in a ferrule rod here pretty soon, the next couple of weeks. They're not that expensive. Even the really good ones are, you know, 20 bucks or so. But uh, I mentioned last night that I don't usually carry one. Well, I don't have one right now. I, I do have one on the bottom of my match case, but uh, it's only about an inch long. It works. I've been able to spark up uh, a fire with, uh, with an accelerant. On there. In fact, I used—I think it was Zippo lighter fluid that I used. But uh, I carry this old girl with me wherever I go. You know, I uh, keep her in that waterproof case there, and uh, she sparks up every time. I usually I keep a supply of lighter fluid with me because one problem with these is if you don't use them, uh, they dry out. And obviously, you know, I'm not the first person to review a Zippo lighter. These things have been around for God knows how long. But uh, just thought I'd maybe talk a little bit about my choice there of a uh, fire starting implement. I also have uh, in my pack, I've got a couple of big lighters. They're in plastic bags and waterproof containers. So uh, it's never been an issue before. Never run out of, uh, never been in a situation that I couldn't get a fire going. One other item that I wanted to look at right here now most guys that I know um, they're not they're not real fond of doing the squirrel hunting with a 22 rifle they think a shotgun's the only way to get them and uh, a shotgun's an easy way to get them if you've got one if you if you see a squirrel if there's one you know within within range you can take him out with a with a shotgun, number seven, number six bird shot. Um, I'm taking quite a few of them with this. And, you know, it's obviously you're going to do it at close range. 30 yards is about about the maximum where I can be pretty sure I'm going to hit, obviously with, the, uh, with that short sight radius. 
but this gun is uh, for a pistol. It's, it's pretty accurate. It took a little bit of getting used to. Uh, I took it out to the range and I put a lot of rounds through it. Um, figured out where I needed to be. And of course, there's a lot of techniques to shooting a pistol that uh, most guys that don't. If you shoot a rifle all the time, a pistol is going to be uh, kind of foreign to you because you don't have to worry about finger position with a rifle. With a with a pistol, you know, you got to keep your you got to have your grip just just so and get your uh, get your finger on the trigger there. Um, but with a little bit of practice, I've been able to do pretty well with this, and I'm taking some squirrels with it. And it's lightweight. I, I carry it on my belt just because. Now, I've got this uh, cylinder, it's 22 Magnum, and uh, I carry it with the 22 Magnum in it going into the woods because uh, the biggest thing you're going to run into out here is uh, uh, a, uh, maybe a feral dog, feral hog. Uh, one of the two. Now I have had I have had to run him with a dog out here before. Um, I ran him off with a stick, but if if it had gotten any worse, I had this to use too. And I know that I've heard there's hogs out here. I've I've never I've never seen them. I know farther east of here, about 10 miles, 20 miles, there's another uh, state park that's uh, that's got quite a few of them in it. I've I've uh, run across some hog wallows there, but haven't seen anything out here that would indicate to me that we've got a hog problem. But uh, that, feral dogs, um, 22 Magnum's not the ideal round, but it's better than 22 long rifle. And, uh, you know, if I was going someplace else, I'd, I'd carry a little bit more firepower, but this is uh, just a nice gun, simple, and uh, I like it. I shoot it well, and uh, it fits my hands really well, and that's, that's kind of the key. Uh, it's not like a truck or a car where you know people are brand loyal to uh, uh, loyal to certain brands just because that's for whatever reason. With a gun, especially a pistol, it's uh, it's got to fit, and I don't care what brand it is. I'm a, I'm a Glock fan. I have one, and I shoot it well. I know several people that that hate them because uh, just because of the way they fit their hand. Um, so it's all about preference. But this, to me, is uh is an essential tool coming out here, um, especially if I was going to spend a lot of time out here because I can I can uh, put food on the table with it, and I, and I have. So I thought I'd just show that to you a little bit. I know that there's a lot of talk on the site about uh, uh, you know guns for survival and this and that and self-reliance. Uh, this isn't a, the be-all, end-all, obviously, but it's a it's a pretty useful tool. Uh, in the right hands. Thanks for watching. Um, I think we're going to head out. I'm going to wake Andrew up here in a couple of minutes and we're going to head out for the woods. And while we're in the woods, we're going to head out to the squirrel country. And uh, we'll be back in a bit. All right, guys, Russ again. Um, thought I'd throw out this little tip. Um, yesterday, it, as Andrew and I were hiking out here for our uh, one-night stay uh, in the Lost Nations, uh, as I was hiking up the hill right over there, my uh, my cheap belt gave out on me. It's a uh, Walmart special, a Dickies. I don't know if you can see it. It uh, The buckle uses uh, friction to hold it in place. I thought it was kind of a neat deal. Um, it might be neat for holding up your pants for work or whatever, but it's not good when you're when you're carrying a, a heavy knife and a pistol and and other items on your belt. So what I did, because we have to hike back out of here today, and I got to put all that stuff back on, um, I found another use. I don't know if I'm the first guy to do it, but I personally found another use for myself for a paracord. I have made a set of paracord suspenders here. Ran those through the loop. And then under the belt, um, crossed them over on the back. I don't know if you can see that or not. My phone camera sucks, but uh, yeah, just tied them off there. Made a made a loop right here uh, to catch them up with, to uh, to cinch them with, cinch knot, whatever. Uh, I tied that about right here, so that when I pulled it up and pulled through, just just at about top chest level, it uh, tightened them right up and hold them in place and. Uh, I think that's going to work. Not perfect, 
I may have to make some adjustments, especially if I make them permanent. Um, it's something that I'm going to use all the time. I think I might end up putting some clips on the end or uh, at least maybe tying the, the back together. I crossed them over on the back, but they still have a tendency to slip just a little bit. But they're going to work uh, to get us out of here today. But thanks for watching.